Hey, what's going on, brother? Hey, Aaron. Thanks for coming, man. Yeah, bro. You doing all right? I'm doing great. So we yeah. I got a table right before. Yeah, let's see what's going on. Thank you. I remember to turn my cell phone off, and I notice you're, you're not a big cell phone guy. You're not a big Twitter guy. You're, it doesn't seem like you're into any of that stuff. I don't know why. I think it's great. I think the guys, you know, to follow news, to follow friends, family, whatever it is. I just haven't got into it, and I, I've already talked enough trash about it that if I join it now it'd kind of be oh, pointless. Oh, so you, you know were I mean? one of the you were one of the <laughs> I'll negative never people. Do that. I'll never do it. I can't believe you guys are doing it. And so now it's, you know, I can't really go back on it, you know. <laughs> well, but you can come around and say, hey, I've grown. Yeah. I've now accepted the new technology. I'm on board. But <laughs> I, it, I may turn a corner. You guys are working on me, so it, it will take some time. Though. But that's the thing with you. It, you, don't, you don't really have a Twitter personality, and I don't mean that, I mean that positively. Like, you're just not I'm boring like is what of, you're trying to say. In right? a nice way, yes. <laughs> you're very dumb. No. I'm but okay with that. You're it's the simple. Rock, man. It's simple. It's, I'm fine with that. Simple's when, better. When isn't life it? is simplified, it, you know, when baseball is simplified, when everything's simplified, it tends to be a little more easier. Now, was that, were you always like that, or did you have to learn <clears> to be that no. way as you became a professional baseball player? Yeah, with a lot of, you know, failure through baseball, obviously. Um, you just notice that when you try to, the harder you try to do something, obviously it works in, in some aspects of life, but the harder, I, I've found it, the harder you try to do something in, in sports, it's, you tend to be tense, you tend to not react as quickly, and it's hard to learn because that's how I was raised. You, you know, if there's a problem, you go attack it, you know, with a lot of guys with competitive nature, but um, it just, I'm still learning. Obviously, you never, never find the right answers, but you try to just uh, do the best you can with uh, what you've learned in the past and, you know, go on with it. Did you have a, a moment? Over the course of early in your career, where you said, "Well, I gotta stop going after this and kind of let it happen, or relax about a, it." I think there's been a lot of moments in my career, but um, you go through spurts, obviously, with when you when you're not hitting as well as you like at the plate or whatever it may be, and then you just gotta. It's hard to tell someone to, especially yourself, to stay with the same approach, the same work ethic, the same everything. It'll eventually turn around. Well, okay, you're sitting there. Okay, I'm four for 50, you know, waiting for this to turn around, you know, but I mean, it does. I mean, it's, it's when guys start tinkering and, and changing things and then it, then you just start messing with your mind. And I, I've just found that the more you, you relax, guys are at their best, you know, and whenever, you know, you'll ask some guys, hey, what pitch you hit that, you know, the guys that are going good, you know, if you ask Goldie right now, what pitch you hit? I don't know, I just saw it and hit it probably, you know, he's relaxed, he's having a good time and it's just, uh, it tends to bring the instinctual part of baseball back. What's it like to play in Toronto? And because I hear some players, oh, I don't want to go there. It's in Canada, and the money, and the taxes, and all this other stuff. What What's it like playing in Toronto that the average fan probably isn't even aware of? What do you go through? I think the main thing is you're not just playing for a city. You're playing for a country. I think guys that up there really embrace that. You know, you know they they got a big following around Canada, but. Um, I had a great time. I mean, I spent seven years up there you know, in the big leagues, and I was drafted by them. They gave me, you know, I was with them for a long time, so I'm very thankful for everything, everything they did. But um, it is a little different in Canada <laughs> because you have the, you know, whether the loonies and toonies and the money thing and whatnot. It's just what are a, loonies and toonies? I know that we get these these coins, and I'm assuming they still have it up there. It's only been a couple of years, but a dollar coins and two dollar coins. Oh, okay. So toonie, two dollar coin, and loony, yeah. And uh, so you get a lot of change in your pocket, you know? <laughs> What's that rattling sound? <laughs> right. It's just change. So it's uh, a lot of things that you get used to, but it's, it's definitely a, it's a lot bigger city for some reason. It was tough to find like a house. To, you know, you had to go about 30 minutes outside. Yeah. But I mean, so all, my whole time in there, we stayed in you know, a big condo, uh, what do you call it, the high rises right next to the ballpark. So it was, it was nice to just get up whenever you do wow. your thing and walk across the street and you're, you're in a Rogers Center. So then what's it like having been identified, and I'm sure you think of yourself as a Blue Jay your whole career, and all of a sudden they call you in and, and say you've been traded to the desert? I was traded, I mean, unfortunately we never had a, we were never in a playoff run. We had some good teams, and um, but it was just the AL East dominance of the Yankees, Red Sox, and you know the upcoming Tampa Rays that are still obviously doing their thing. But um, 
we're coming into an organization, I knew the, I knew some of the guys. We came there earlier in the year. Um, the coaching staff, obviously, it speaks for itself. But knowing that I was coming into a first place team, um, it was uh, Johnny Mack and, and myself both were. Let's do this. Like, this you guys is, came this over together. Good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's been my he was my teammate for over eight years. So it was it was just a lot of fun. Obviously, we had a, there was nothing. We're at, leaving Toronto. We spent a lot of time together there. But is it to be able to go? That's why everybody plays. I mean, you talk to any athlete, they want to win. Clearly, it energized you. Just looking at the numbers, you can say, wow. He was kind of struggling a little bit in Toronto, and all of a sudden he came to Arizona and bam, what happened? I mean, you hear you hear people talk about changing scenery. You, hear, you know, talk about the guy in first place. I mean, it was just, I don't know. Maybe all of it played a part of it. But it was just from day one, this clubhouse. They were very open arms, accepting, and these guys made made it home very quick. And it's been an unbelievable spot. So it's we're looking to get back to that feeling we had in 2011. You know. And you had been in a long time at that point. That was your probably your first playoff experience, right? Yeah. First, yeah. we got second place. Um, I have. I don't know, 2006 or something Slogging like that. Logging through the yeah, AL East right. every year. But we were like 12 games back or whatever it was. But it was, uh, <laughs> but it was like second place. We got it, baby. <laughs> we did it. I remember Dr. Collins. He, you know, he's these these the guys where everyone goes. He came in. He was an awesome guy. But he came and said, "Well, you have a concussion." Thanks, Doc. <laughs> okay. You are good. Yeah. Wow, man. You're every bit of what they tell me. Sixty-three games you missed this year with the hand. How hard was that? What was that like? It's never fun being out. Obviously, when you, especially right off the bat, I think it was ten or eleven games in, yeah. and uh, you're trying to come back, and then you find out it's it's broke, and then you know, okay, there's a timeline, you know, four six weeks, whatever it may be, and then if you come to find out whenever that timeline was up, it hadn't healed at all. So then you're going. Okay, this is awesome, you know. <laughs> so now it's just. What was that like? I, I remember talking to you about that one day. Like you sit out, it's wrapped up. They finally take it off. You stick it under the MRI or whatever it is, and they tell you, guess what, Aaron? It hasn't healed. I would have never thought it in a million years because it felt great. You know what I mean? I felt stronger. I, you know, I wasn't doing a lot. Obviously, it was in a cast, but um, I just didn't. I didn't see that coming at all. You know, it kind of hit me from the from behind, but. Um, but again, it, it happened. There was there's nothing I could do about it. I got hit hit by a pitch. You know, I was gonna sulk and sit around and feel sorry for myself, you know. But I, yeah, I would have loved to have been playing. But I had some great time with you know great time with the family. Got a lot of pool time with little girl. But uh, <laughs> watching those watching those games, watching TV, you know, where you're supposed to be. That's your job. You're supposed to be doing that. That's no. It's not easy for anybody. I mean, it's just it's you want to get back as, as soon as possible. And and uh, but you just got to make sure that everything's. You know, for anyone that's hurt, you got to make sure you're ready to go because it's an elite level. And just because a lot of guys say, "Hey, I'm ready," sometimes it's it's more the being stubborn and whatnot than uh, than actually ready to be performing at, at a high level. You went through something like that as well, in a, really a much more serious situation in Toronto when you had the concussion and missed almost a whole year, right? This year and that year was the the two longest I've you know I've spent. F I missed the last four months with a concussion. And that's a serious. There's there's. Every concussion is serious, but you were out right. for a long time. Well, what, what was that like? There was a time where I really didn't know if I was going to be playing again. I mean, honestly, I was. Did they tell you that? Well, no. They just they told me I went to the went all over the country about you know dealing with the special head guys, concussion guys, whatever it may be. And we were in Pittsburgh, and I remember Dr. Collins. He you know he's these these are the guys where everyone goes. He came in. He was an awesome guy. But he came and said, "Well, you have a concussion." Thanks, Doc. <laughs> okay. You are good. Yeah. Wow, man. You're every bit of what they tell me. No, pretty much. I mean, what it boiled down to is, I asked him. I said, "Well, how come some guys?" And then this is like two months into it. How come some guys are back in a week, two weeks, three weeks? Other guys never recover. Other guys. I mean, what's? Because I got hit by a. What year was I this? collided 2008. Eight? I collided with David Eckstein. If you know him, he's six eight, two thirty. So it's a powerful. Punch, you know what I mean? Nice try. He's shorter than you are. <laughs> yeah, you he may be the one guy right, in the league right. that's shorter than you are. <laughs> so we collided, and he, he, you know, I caught an elbow right to the temple, and he just said, "It's there's no rhyme or reason. Obviously, we can't operate on a live brain. We, you know, there's no reason why it happens this way. We have theories, but 
Um, you just have to take it easy. Like I, that's the best advice I can give you. That's what we've seen in the past. What symptoms are you having? It while was this is going on. I couldn't ride a bike without the just you know the stationary bikes without the room spinning. Wow. I couldn't watch the games in the dugout at times because the bright lights and loud noises they start spinning again. There were days where I felt good, and and I'd let them know, and they'd say, okay, well let's let's go try, so let's go try to run around or whatever. And then the next day, we just, it seemed, it feel like we'd take one step forward and like three or four steps back, you know. And this was all before the meeting with the Pittsburgh doctor. And we went up there, and he was the one that said, hey, in my opinion, you should just shut, shut everything down. Wow. And I'm lucky that our GM at the time, J.P. Ricciardi, was, um, you know, he he was on board with that. I mean, I didn't want I know it. I J.P., he's a great yeah, dude. he's awesome. But, I mean, if, he, if your GM says, hey, I want you to get out there and go play, like, there's a good chance I, I would have tried to do everything I could to get out there and go play. So I'm thankful for that because who knows what would have happened, you know? And I want to say that year, so I was, they sent me home. I, I was home, went back to Florida where we lived at the time, my wife and the dog, and it was before we had kids. So we would just go on, you know, morning walks just as slow as we could, you know, nothing, no, no exercise, no nothing. Had to learn how to eat better because obviously when your exercise level is here, oh, your yeah. diet's here. But when your exercise level goes to zero, you got to find another That's way to eat. Sportscaster diet. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, about Thanksgiving was the first time I started. I started jogging. I'm not jogging, but walking the dog and just feeling a little like, okay, I want to test it out a little bit. And just started jogging with them a little bit, and it worked out. Obviously, I think you know, thankful that everything worked out because it. Came into spring, uh, good to go. And I'm sure the team had their concerns too. Obviously, with not knowing if I was going to be okay or not, because you know a similar thing happened to Corey Koski a couple years before before me, and uh, well, a lot of guys. But so it they worked out. But then you come back in a huge way, and all of a sudden you're one of the best power hitters in baseball. I don't know what happened to us. <laughs> <laughs> come on. I know it was it was amazing. We were just joking about that the other day because the Wade asked how many home runs I hit in 2009, and we were. We were talking about 36? I said, yeah, good memory. But it was funny because if you go back and look at, if you look at all those, if you, you know, the highlight video or whatever it is, I'd say probably at least 20 of them, the left fielder's jumping for it, you know, because you go hey, from all left center. The, they all count the same. <laughs> they all count. I said, I'm not, guys always talk about power. I said, well, I'm not the one that's putting them in the second deck, but I'll take every one of those, every one of those wall scrapers that get over the, over the fence. I mean, there's 100,000 people in the stadium. And you got another 50,000 people outside the stadium all chatting the same thing. It's just make your hair stand up. Well, you were used to winning in at LSU, right? I mean, that's some good teams. <laughs> that's it. I mean, team. there's, you know, Alabama football and there's North Carolina basketball and there's LSU baseball. That's it, Dave. Because I've been there. I've been to Baton Rouge. I've been to some games. It's nuts down there. And have you been in the new stadium? Yes. The Alec Box. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I went uh, last year, actually. Went down there and saw, I mean, they are spoiled. And I it's, hope they it's know like that. An, it's like a Major League Baseball <laughs> it is, clubhouse. It really is. And um, Because the old stadium yeah. was this classic. Yeah, it was small. the Alex Box Stadium. Right. You know, it was, it was, and it still sat, they somehow sat about 8,000 people in there. And I want to say now with this new one, they got the suites above, and it probably holds 10, 12. That's just a guess. Yeah. But, I mean, it's packed. I know it's packed every night. I still keep in touch with the guys over there. Right across the street from the football stadium. Yeah. I mean, and it's if you've quite been to a football game, there. oh my gosh. I mean, there's 100,000 people in the stadium, and you got another 50,000 people outside the stadium all chatting the same thing. It's, just make your hair stand up. I can't imagine being an opposing team coming in. There's always stories that guys say, man, I hated coming into LSU to play just because whether they're a pitcher or whatever, it was just it was a, it was a rough atmosphere. it's like a cult. <laughs> I mean, so many of those Southern programs, whether it's football or basketball or baseball, they're nuts, man, in a great way. In a great way. Yeah. And they always, they're, they were classy, too, in a way, because they'd do everything they could to mess with the kids, but they'd feed them afterwards they would send I mean I can't tell you how many times every team whether or not they won or lost you know visiting team they'd go right after the game they'd go right to the parking lot and you'd have the tailgaters all the tailgaters yep. just welcome them like they're one of their own but the same guy that was telling them how bad he was you know getting all over them but they're they were they were pretty cool with that so how'd you end up there because you grew I up in no California I have no idea right? how I ended up in LSU you have no idea <laughs> you were kidnapped I was I was uh I verbally committed to Fresno State 
And this is in you're in Visalia, in, right? Yeah, in Visalia. So Fresno's about you know 40 minutes away. And verbally, I didn't get recruited a lot for baseball. I'll tell you the truth, I had a couple teams in California, and then the random letters that always came in from you know Turtle Thomas at LSU. And I got recruited more for Turtle Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Oh, I can't let that go. <laughs> Who's Turtle uh, Thomas? The hitting coach. He was in Miami before that. Okay. And he was the hitting coach in, in uh, LSU. His name's uh, Henry, I think. <laughs> but we always called him Turtle because that was, I don't like know the, why. Like even, the Entourage even, guy. even his uh, business card, it says Turtle Thomas. Is he like the guy on Entourage? <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> but he's a really good hitting coach. And we had Smoke Laval, Skip Bertman. So, you know, all these. Everybody's got, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So. I verbally committed with uh, one of my best friends from Visalia, Shane Costa, who ended up getting drafted by the Royals. But um, we both verbally committed to Fresno State. And I and said, they have well, a really good program, too. They have an unbelievable program. Yeah. And so, at, plus, I was getting a, a good scholarship there, which for our family was awesome. In-state, you know what I mean? That It helped out a lot. And then um, I've never been to Louisiana, and I had a chance to go there. I didn't have, they didn't have anything on the table. I think it was like 600 bucks. It was books I think they had on the table. And we weren't quite sure if that was going to work out, you know. Yeah. But we said, you know what, let's go down there, check it out. Why not? We, got, we have our visit down there. So we go down, and I fell in love with the place. I mean, I absolutely fell in love with the place. I couldn't tell you what it was, but the people, the program. I didn't follow college baseball that much. I, was a, I followed Major League Baseball. Sure. You know, I, I, didn't, I honestly God, didn't know about all the championships that they won, NCAA titles. Um, so getting there and like seeing all this and how big this program was, was it blew me away. I told my dad, you know, that week I said, Dad, I want to come here. If we can make this work, this would be unbelievable. And they, the LSU ended up winning it that year, and I came the year after. And we went to the College World Series, but we didn't, we didn't, we didn't win. I was two and Q, so it was kind of. <laughs> but I had a just an awesome experience. I think it was great because I, I feel like we matured more as a as a person, as a as a man, you know, in college not, and a baseball player. And uh, you know, who knows what would have happened uh, going into Anna, you know, going. I think to it worked out pretty well. But I think it worked out. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is their home, right? I mean, you can't. So that's can't what, be what mad I try. That's right. what I try to tell my wife. Honey, it's the desert. They right. they were here first. They're here. You're yes. not going to do anything about it. I mean, she's my wife wants to spray like twice and or whatever and do this and that. But it's they're here. It's not going to go anywhere. You mentioned your dad a bunch of times. What, what, was, what was he like? He was a baseball player. He was a hard worker, obviously. What did he uh, do? He was in the, he's been in the mortgage business for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he's, he grew up in Sacramento. And, you know, so we'd go make trips up and down there every now and then see the, see the grandparents. But he was just always very disciplined. That's kind of what we, we noticed as my brother and I. My brother and I, we were born on the same day, two years apart. He's a younger brother. He was always, you know, very. He was great with us with sports, great with everything. But it was, it was, a, it was structured. It was disciplined, you know. And it was, it was. This is how you. If you want things to be better, you have to work for it. If you want this, you're going to work for it. It's always about working hard and, and understanding that if you want certain things or whatever, you're, you're going to have to go get it. It's not easy with our culture now because we want stuff now when we want it yeah. all the time. So, yeah. do, do you remember a specific thing when you were a kid that you might have wanted, and your dad said, "Oh, you're going to do it this way instead"? Or? Well, no, not really, because it was always it was always sports with us. Like we would play anything and everything growing up. We You're lived a in a cul-de-sac. Right? I love soccer, soccer, football. You know, we played roller hockey. We played anything that the kids wanted to play that day. We were into it, so we were just always active. You know, running track, and that was a big thing. With you know, we had to. We were outside. We were always doing stuff. And I think nowadays, like you mentioned, it's there's a lot of you know, video games and the, the whatever. There's a lot of distractions as opposed to just getting out and having fun. And, and So you and were the neighborhood kid out in the street. That, that was it. And we had a lot of kids in that street. For some, some reason, you know, 10 homes on the street, I, I guarantee you all of them had two or three kids in it. So in all the same age, I think they planned it that way. Because it was every night, you know, someone's getting in trouble for staying out too late playing baseball or soccer or whatever it is on the street. So there was no grass, so we'd come in, you know, cut up quite a There's bit. There's no grass. Well, you're playing, in, you're playing everything in the cul-de-sac. Oh, you know? I guess so. It was, it was. We, we got now some those good, poor people that lived on the cul-de-sac. I mean, oh, I can't. I mean, I still stories still come out of the woodwork if I see some old neighbors that I haven't seen in a while. I remember the time when you did this and that, and 
you know. You knocked like, over my mailbox. Yeah, or... right. You hit a golf ball out of your back. Like, why would, I don't know. I did <laughs> a lot of things when I was a kid I probably shouldn't have, but you know, it worked out. Do you feel settled now knowing that you're, it's not like you're 40, you've got a lot of baseball left in you, but I don't want to push so. out the pastor just yet. <laughs> but do you feel, I mean, you've got a, a long-term deal here and you're settled in and you're living here in the Valley. Do you feel like you can sort of put down roots and become part of what's going on around here? That's, that was, that's the plan. My wife and I, we really liked it here when we first came and we have, we were there for a couple months and we just, it was amazing how fast we really loved it here you know what I mean like it was not know, just for a lot of it's great. a lot of different reasons I mean all of our families in California it's an easy hour flight I mean everything is I can't tell you how many things are just such it's nice <laughs> to, to be able to call this home and we're excited to call it home and uh, still getting used to the scorpion thing but it I, you know I get did you that. have an experience I haven't been bit yet or stung whatever you call it but um, we see them I mean we're They're a little we're a little north so I mean it's I mean this is their home right I mean you can't so that's, what I try, that's what I try to tell my wife. Honey, it's the desert. They, right. they were here first. They're here. You're yes. not going to do anything about it. Which she's, my wife wants to spray like twice and or whatever and do this and that. It's, babe, it's, they're here. They're not going to go anywhere. But uh, everything else, we've just had a blast. So well, it's great. I mean, it's amazing how many baseball players live here. This is like yeah. baseball headquarters year round. And it's fun, too. I mean, you talk about golf in the off season when it's 70 degrees and you always see somebody because, I, like you said, not just spring training, but everyone makes home here. I mean, it's, it's a tough place to be. Well, yeah, I'm just fortunate to be able to play here. <laughs> I, I believe me, I know how it feels because we. I moved here from New England where the yeah, weather's miserable. Right, and right. Even in the summertime where it's warm, it's humid, and yeah, but this is spectacular. Yeah, so we, we both did okay, right? I think it worked out. <laughs> right, hopefully for a long time. Thanks, man. <laughs> thanks for coming and doing right. this. I appreciate no, it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.